right, so I'm going to do a little intro to what I'm going to be doing this evening. I am working on changing tires on the back of my large Toro zero-turn mower. The tires are suffering from age and are very tired. They look like they have a lot of tread on them, but they generally don't work very well. And in a couple of cases, well, this one specifically, there's a bit of a problem right there. I'm not too crazy about how those tires look or how they work. And they need new ones. So that is what I'm doing this evening. I am changing blue rear tires, and I'm going to put a tube in one of the front tires that won't seal because the rim is bad. Anyway, hope you watch and enjoy the video. Thank you. Basically 10 pounds of air or less in them, and they're cold, so they're going to be really fun to get off. Oh. I'm going to dig out up here. Plus, there's a lot of heater going. You're going to hear all that noise. Sorry. The only way I can get tired of going up right now is in the mid 40s down here. I don't have a tire machine. What I have is this old rig that we put together a long time ago. Plus the tires loose. That can give you quite a headache if you're not paying attention. Thank <laughs> you. 
How bad the roasted are we? Somebody used tire seal on it. Maybe it's tire seal. I don't know. Find out. These rims are really old. They're really old rims don't like sealing. Now we get to the fun part. See the belief. Everywhere. 
somewhat deflated and crunched, but they're warm to the touch now, which should make them a lot easier to get on. And my UPS shipping label. tire like this, I can get inside the tire and pull it on. And that makes a world of difference when you're trying to shove the thing in there to be able to set the spoon inside the tire, push it over, and have tire on it. We've got this one about whipped. He said. Probably one more. And there she goes. Alright. Now comes the fun part. And the vice grip trick. I don't know if you've seen this trick before. I've seen pros use it, and I've seen some amateurs use it too, but the trick is really simple. Okay. Get in here. Get the wheel, set the way I want it. You gotta take a rag like this, pull it a couple of times, set it around the rim. Get your vice grips. Yeah, I'm putting 
put some pressure on it. Did you see how the moisture can grab a hold of it? Well, you concentrate on what you got to do here. Grips out comes, no damage to no one. There is now on. Now, the next thing requires a strap. I'm not seriously going to be friendly. We'll get this over here through the jungle. We gotta have air. What normally happens is you end up with a buckle somewhere in the tire. All of them all work the way you want it to. So get yourself a cable strap, like so. And you set it into the binder. Come here. Yeah, you can come on through there. You don't got to be evil about it. Up. And you want to go around about the center on the tire and as flat as you can be. You want the strap to be flat. What we're going to do is compress the middle as evenly as we can. Do this. Well, let's not twist that. It'd be kind of dumb to go to all that effort and then waste it. Alright, 
put up on it there. We're almost on it there. Not quite there yet. There's one pop. Okay. Let it sit for a minute. Where are these? such low pressure, you have to have a special gauge for it. So this gauge goes for 20 pounds, no more. So. Yeah, see I'm just shy of the pressure I'm supposed to be running. Be all but there. These things don't take much to keep the pressure. Yeah, one pound over. It's cold right now. What are you supposed to run? 20 PSI max. Alright, so let's take it up to about 15. I tend to the 5 under. Oh, that's close. I know that's rough. Go on. Tires make me nervous. Anything goes wrong with a tire or anything while you're building it, it is nothing for this thing to go smoke and hurt you really bad. There we go, 15 pounds. On the money. All right, so now, bubbles in the valve. And no bubbles. Real slow set. So they sell really fancy bubble detectors. What I use is really dumb. Soft soap, barely cut like one to one, maybe two to one with water, and then you spray it really slowly. And then you get a, a thicker bubble detector. It actually works pretty good. So, no bubbles. You can see enough. We'll dry it off. Can we will schwank the cover back on there, which I've done put someplace. Got a pop in this here. There it is, hiding underneath. And we'll turn over and have a look at the other side. That's a shiny looking tire now, ain't it? Spiffy. Off a little bit. Get a nice layer of it on the rim. Spray it in there slow. And what we're looking for is little tiny bubbles. They grow. Now I don't see a blessed thing. That's good. Clean it up. That's one. I'll go stick it back on there. I mean, it seems like a bunch of nuts, but that's it. You've got to have some way to break the bead on these things. They make a tool for slamming and knocking them loose. Uh, you've seen this guy. I'm going to pull you loose here and show you. All right, so that's a homemade rig made out of old one-inch pipe. So it's got that teardrop loop. It has two little four, I guess they're four inch spikes to hold the tire up. The back is three-legged. Comes together in the middle. All welded up. That was done with a stick welder. I want to say 30, maybe 35 years ago. And then the handle, so we got adjustable positions in it, but we never really changed them. My dad built this a long, long time ago, and it works. So. so I want to close this out with a couple of comments. The tire, the second one that I put on, 
was a very much larger pain to actually get to seal up with the rim. There are lots and lots of different ways to do it. You saw me messing around with it for several tries there before it finally caught air on the first tire. The second tire when squeezing in the middle would not seal up. So what I ended up having to do was get another strap, like you saw the orange one in the first tire, strap within an inch of the outside border on both sides of the tire and then while pushing air into the tire from the air hose, I was whacking on it with that uh, dead blow hammer. The dead blow hammer shocks the rubber out sideways and it will eventually cause the thing to seal up. There are other ways to do it, sometimes much smarter ways to do it. I am not at all willing to use the trick that some people use where they spray ether into there and light it because the expanding burn from the ether will blow the tire up on the rim. These rims are so low pressure and I have seen people get hurt doing the ether trick. It's cute. It's an emergency field repair. I wouldn't do it myself personally if I didn't have to. Other than that, um, there's probably things in there you won't want to do if you're a professional. I ain't a professional. So what you see is me doing my thing and getting it put together. Those little tire spoons, the ones with the bent edges, are incredibly handy. They work really well in specific tires. I can use them in everything above, say, a bicycle tire. I change motorcycle tires with them all the time, so they're very cool. Anyway, I'm sure there are people who are going to say everything in there is wrong. Uh, the vice grip trick is the what, I, what I really wanted you to see because it really works. As long as you clamp onto some surface that will allow you to clamp on the rim and you do not bend the rim because you don't want to do that. But a multi-layered cloth like that will get enough grip and the vice grips will not do any damage through the cloth and it's the extra pair of hands you've got to have to get a tire to pull on right. I've used it for car tires and almost everything else. Anyway, hope you enjoy the video and I'll